So the aim of the project was to explore the possibilities towards developing a distributed setup for IIT Bombay X platform so as to enable the educational institutions that may not possess the skill to install such a complex system. So as part of this project, we have tried to customize and package the platform such that other institutions can set up their own platform with the least amount of expertise. We came up with a native system which at present has been distributed successfully into two servers. So just a gist of it, like what is happening. So as we have understood the problem statement, now there, what we have is different type of approaches that we can follow. So one basic or oh, most obvious approach is the native approach. Other is Docker based, one is tutor based, and one is Bitnami. So like we have focused mostly on the native approach, uh, but like first of all, we have also tried with tutor and it was successfully installed on the single server and then, uh, we tried mostly with the native approach. So these are like all the approaches are live at this IP. Like every approach is live at different IPs. So we can go and check out there. It's running. So like there are various pros and cons of everything. So we will explain native only. Let's start with native. So first of all, to understand the architecture, we did a native installation. These were the steps. So we will not go into depth. After performing these steps, there were a list of errors that came up. After each run of the installation, we rectified the error as we move forward. These are some of the errors that are listed. After uh, rectifying these errors, it was installed successfully on a single server. Next, we tried on distributed uh, to distribute the platform on two servers. So for that, we need to make some changes on these three files. So first of all, in inventory.ini, only the local host 127.0.1 is mentioned. So uh, in this file, we'll mention the host name where we want to uh, install the server and their host IPs. Then in openedix native.yml, we need to mention, uh, group together the services according to the server in which we want to install them. And finally, in native.sh, we have to make a change. The, this file originally consists of by default minus the local and minus i local host. Since all the services were being installed in the local host, now that distribution of services into servers have been specified according to the servers present in inventory.ini file, we do not use minus the local and minus i local host needs to be replaced with minus i inventory.ini. So these were again some of the errors. And here we have shown three errors and if we go to this link, we have listed down like all the errors. So currently the distributed installation and two servers is live on these two IPs. And these are the future scopes like we have distributed in two servers. It can be easily scaled up in the number of servers. We need to test it for more than two servers with different colleges. And there might be some problems with IDS services like discovery credentials, which need to be fixed in case they are installed on separate services. So that was all. So you said, so you tried three. One is Docker-based, native, and uh, Bitnami. And so what is that you identified in a Docker-based approach? Because I mean, this is an obvious uh, question to us. Uh, you know, uh, for the last so many years, uh, Docker-based solutions like Google, Google Kubernetes or Google Cloud uh, systems, they actually run Dockers, and they don't run VMs. So. What is your take on this? So, because you mentioned that it is not uh, uh, to be, I mean, should not should not be using in production. Yes, sir. And that is that is the thing which is there in that edX. Yes. The same lines that you are copied, actually. Yeah, the approaches that we mentioned, like native or Docker, it's already provided by edX for single servers. So, the reason behind behind choosing native and not the Docker is like. Uh, what is basically happening in Docker? We are pulling those images which are already hosted into the hubs. So, like, we can pull those images and then run it. But, like, we basically require to change the configurations. Uh, we need to change the configuration of the image and all that. So, that part is somewhat difficult by using Docker. But when no. we use it with the help of no, native. No, 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 no. So, then you should have a whole setup of creating your own Docker images. So you'll have to do those configurations first, or some of those things where like inventory.ini, that you'll have to supply, right? That you'll have to 
supply while actually you are going to uh, install or deploy deploy the system but then coming up with you know like so so they have those dockers right uh, already docker files are there it is not the docker files are not there but then i think what what you should have is that you should have your own image repositories okay tailored to your use you know what what things you need to ch change maybe i saw so many things like 127.0.0. okay right so all of this should come from from the user right yes. i mean the system admin who is actually going to feed in that data and then go and sit in on different dockers right i mean this configuration, configuration changes, right? I mean, that is what is expected. It's like right. the, so, so, but then but there is another problem. There's another problem. So why that uh, Docker-based solution is not good is because that is, that is a development uh, type of a thing which they are using. So they have something called as um, run server. You know run server, Jung, Django run server. People use it yes. for testing and yeah. like that. So if you replace that, See, this, this is one thing which I know. I wanted to know from you and my team other solutions. So one, of one, one way to solve this is to replace, I mean, to have Nginx there, right? And uh, Nginx and mm. G-Unicorn. So Nginx will be your uh, reverse proxy. You have to know the configurations of uh, Nginx. What is that you want, right? And then you have G-Unicorn. Right, which will act as your web application server. Yeah. So if these things are put, and you have a separate Docker or something, okay, Nginx Docker, and then you supply those configurations as you want. Do you want asynchronous? Do you want uh, uh, synchronous? Do you want, I mean, there are so many options you will find, okay, where you'll have to supply, and you will have to find how the servers are acting, right? I mean. You, do you want do you want all the HTTP calls to go and call G Unicorn and and get all those static files, or do you want Apache or uh, Nginx only to serve those HTTP files? I mean, so we'll make static files. The so images. these things, you know, these are very important. So when you see when you go for production, these things are are quite important. And if you can give this to a user who who doesn't know all these things, right, and then maybe a click of a button, you should be able to install it. I mean, that is what we ex expected in this uh, yeah, kind of thing. Is that, uh, the one that is yeah. there in IIT Bombay is using native. Yeah, I know, I know it is using native, but uh, so I think the world is going towards a Docker-based solution. And so, uh, um, sort of you can say a decision was made uh, before they arrived that we will go with the Ansible native approach for doing the IIT Bombay installation, the distributable one. So they did it as part of exploring all the options to make sure that whatever are the other options, we definitely want to reject them. Okay, so with that view, they have done all of those. And now again, the conclusion is that we want to go with the Ansible uh, native um, approach, which is why we have not explored the Docker and Bitnabi uh, uh, options much more. Okay, we are focusing on the Ansible. Yeah, yeah, no, the native, the uh, uh, the, four, the first Doc option that they talked no, about. I, I don't see any much much difference is there. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm saying that about. that uh, we have chosen one approach. Right, it right. is possible to approach uh, uh, to explore see, the other I, approaches also. I asked also. this question huh. because he has put a slide there, huh. right? And he has put a slide on Docker, and okay. he has put a con con on that. Okay. So I wanted to know what are the other cons. Right. <laughs> okay. So one I can so uh, which that is what one that I can yeah. talk about. <laughs> one that I can talk about no, is. No, no, the, I don't want yeah. you to talk. I wanted them to talk, because. Okay. When you because put they something, have said the con. When you okay. put something. Fine. Why? Why is that they are put? I have some simple questions. So if one can play the slide and one can answer my question. So you installed on two servers, correct? Uh, so now I want to install it on three servers. How easy or difficult it is now? Means now you have explored the process. Now you know how to install on two. Then like while installing it on two servers, what we have thought is let's keep all the DBs on one server and other services running on the other server. So now when we are installing it on the three server or more than three servers, so these same kind of decisions we need to make. 
like what all services we need to run on one server what all services we need to make on other servers so let so us say we made that decision uh, let us say we made those decisions after that how easy or difficult is it for you to install on the given configuration uh, first of all we have specified the three files first of all we will make the changes in inventory.ini there we will mention the three servers and then in openedx native.yml here we will mention how we want to distribute it for example and we will group them together like these services we want to install in this host these services we want to install in the other host and so on okay and then we will run the native.sh mm -hmm. but you mentioned no, like you you received lots of errors while you were installing yeah. so, uh, so what are the chances now means will be the same errors will be there or some new errors will be there so, so new errors might come, but Actually, with one or two services. Okay. Most like of the errors in that we found out, we are able to remove that except for some of the errors like this one. Instances of local host as, uh, that is 127.0. are present at various locations. What this causes is if some services are installed in some Correct. other server and they are not able to communicate between them, this will cause a problem. Mm. So, uh, so to resolve this, we haven't uh, this. Uh, Error is still open. We have uh, haven't been completely able to resolve this. We have resolved this for two servers. For two servers, this works fine. We have mentioned the host like how to communicate between them. So for three servers, etc. If those um, who are communicating between them, the services that communicate, if we distribute them in different servers and they are not able to communicate, then those won't run. So that would be the problem. So for that, we need to understand the architecture, how they are communicating in greater depth in order to solve that So now that you problem. know the architecture, correct? Huh? You know the architecture. Uh, mm, as we have written, we don't know in great depth. So Okay, okay. but let us say I, I have given you a task to install it in five servers. <laughs> okay. okay. I have given you the configuration also. So how much time do you need to do that? Okay, so... And this three can be done instantaneously. We'll mm -hmm. change the and as you say we can, change but it, after that, as we'll try uh, after we'll run the native dot sh. Now for every error, we'll ah, have to run so the it's script a long process, again. Okay. So got for it. example, here around seventeen errors we got. So f that means like seventeen times we ran the whole script. Thank you.